Hey everyone, in today's video, we're going to take a look at the Kenwood KR1000. Now this is a piece of equipment that I actually use every single day. I use it as an alarm clock, believe it or not, because that's what all these controls right here are for. Yes, this is a stereo receiver from the very early 1980s that has an alarm clock built into it. Programmable timers, if you will. You can program this receiver to turn on and off on any given day at any given time. You can also program it to turn on every day at a certain time, and that's what I do. My wife and I use this to wake up in the morning. We have it set to NPR, and it's really nice to listen to the news through really good speakers. And it sounds pretty good through this, too. You know, much better than your standard clock radio. However, the member of the household that likes this the most is our cat, Sadie. Sadie sits on top of this receiver every single morning, sometimes before it turns on, and she sits on it because it gets really nice and warm due to the uh, heat sinks and the uh, transistors and stuff. <coughs> Have you had enough? Okay, let's get you out of here. However, we just got back from a trip out of town, and in the morning, it didn't turn on. And in fact, this is all it does. You hear you hear a click inside of it. And the radio display turns on. But anybody who has seen these uh, working knows that there's all kinds of crazy lights that turn on right here. And you've got power meters right here and it, this thing looks really cool. That's why I was given the nickname the Galaxy Commander. So I'm going to strap on the GoPro. We're going to start taking this thing apart. We're going to see how much cat hair is inside of this and see if maybe that's related to uh, why this thing isn't turning on. So let's go. I forgot to mention this thing also is uh, rated at 120 watts per channel into 8 ohms. So uh, that's quite a few. I've had this apart in the past actually. I took it apart when I first got it years ago because the, uh, the vacuum fluorescent displays would uh, just kind of go in and out if you like pushed down on the receiver like right around here if you pushed down it would actually make the displays turn back on and uh, what that ended up being was uh, cold solder joints on the circuit board where the display attaches because these displays run pretty hot as uh, most vacuum fluorescents do and uh, the solder just wasn't up to the task after uh, uh, 35 years at that point so now this thing is 40 years old and uh, it's impressive it works as well as it does given the uh, complexity but uh, we'll see what's going on here okay oh yeah yep that is that is pretty bad that is what you get when you let your cat sit on top of your uh, receiver constantly. I might have to get the vacuum before I go any further. I talked to my friend who has had a few of these and he said there's some fuses coming right off the transformer. That's where I'm gonna start. I see them right in there. What I see is three perfectly good fuses. So uh Sounds like this is going to be a little more complicated than I want it to be. Okay, well, off camera, I got this thing apart a little bit further. Just took some of the panels off, including the uh, the bottom panel. And I was just checking for power off of the transformer, looking at all that stuff, and then I was kind of looking closely right here, and, uh, well, I found this right here. That is, uh, you know not right and uh, I'm not sure what caused it yet um, I might re-solder that and uh, put it on the dim bulb tester and see what happens but uh, I think I've found uh, where the problem starts here uh, that right there is actually basically right off of the uh, the wall outlet so yeah so I've got this thing just laying around I bought somebody's stash of random parts one day, back in the day, and uh, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut a lead off of it, and uh, I'll put a nice little bend in it. I can put it on there. Looks pretty okay. I think I cut off like half a centimeter or so. Try that again. That's pretty good. 
And now, what I can do is, uh, like I said, get very ugly with it. So what I can do now is, I'll solder this to the joint here, or the, uh, the post in the PCB. I guess we have solder on there. And now, here's where it gets ugly. We solder it to this pad right here. Maybe a little bit up there too. So, so that's the dirty right there. See, because this whole thing right here is one section of uh, copper. This is all the same uh, basic uh, circuit here. So. Let's just check it real quick with the uh, continuity meter. Let's just make sure that this is good. Okay, you hear the beeps? So that means that uh, it will uh, be different now because it did not do that before. I think I'll try it on the dim bulb. I'll see what happens. Uh, worst case, it uh, doesn't work, you know? So. Okay, so it's on the dim bulb turned on and as we can see the uh, the alarm clock section has power um, let's see if the ball lights up or anything explodes if we uh, just try turning this on all right here goes okay we got more than we used to um, that never used to turn on we have some stuff here which is good you know these things uh, do draw some current so the fact that it's not a bright bulb is good. These are lit up very dimly, and I heard the speaker relay barely click in. So I think I'm comfortable um, trying this out on wall power. So let's see what happens when we do that. Okay, wall power. Relay clicked in. Um, let's see. Is there any smoke? I don't see any smoke. Eh, my, I might have fixed it. Okay, I hooked up speakers. Um, this is uh, still not making burning smells. Let's make sure the volume's down. Speakers are on. Wow. And there's no antenna hooked up either, so that's kind of cool. Okay. Um, yeah, that was ridiculously easy. After haphazardly repairing that broken solder joint, the receiver worked great. However, I wanted to do a little bit more to it while I had it out. I ended up removing the power amplifier board assembly, reapplying thermal compound, and recapping it since there are only six capacitors. I even replaced the protection lamp since it was burnt out. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a video on all the little things I did to this receiver before putting it back on the dresser. So one great way to do this is to, you know, take one of these guys right here, and then a quarter inch wrench, put it through the wrench, like so, and then you can go in and, uh, um, Yeah, like I said, you know, this fits right in here. So there it is, the Kenwood KR1000. It's working now, and I'm pretty excited that it's going to be a little bit more reliable, a little bit safer, because I adjusted the amplifier and got the uh, thermal compound replaced so that there's better heat transfer among the outputs, and I'll make it last longer. The only downside is that uh, it's not going to run as warm as it used to, so uh, the cat might not be so happy about its return after all, but uh, we'll just have to see. So with that, thank you so much for watching. There's a lot of tools and stuff that I used in this video. You can find links to all of that in the uh, description. I'll see you in the next one. Well, it's guess who jumped up here? Good morning. I'm the minute this thing turned on, it's Sadie. And she is so happy. Her nice warm stereo is back in service. I told you.
She loves this thing. It's her absolute favorite. 